Since part one of this review a couple weeks back, the LG G7 has surprised me twice. One thing I thought would be a problem really wasn't, and another thing I never expected to give me trouble did. Is that enough to make people sit up and take notice of the G7? Probably not. So it's a good thing these cameras are here. I'm Mr. Mobile, and welcome aboard to part two of the LG G7 review, brought to you by TunnelBear. Going into this review, the battery was my biggest concern about the G7. I mean, 3,000 milliamp hours just didn't seem big enough to carry me through a day. Well, whether I've got Qualcomm's tuning or LG's power management to thank, this was the more pleasant surprise. It held up better than I expected. Not that I'm saying it rivals a true road warrior. Look, if you need exceptional battery life, what you need is a Huawei Mate 10 Pro or a Moto Z2 Play. By the end of the day on the G7, I was usually down to the teens on my power meter, but it got me to the end of the day, which I really didn't expect, especially given my typically heavy usage, which includes things like mobile hotspot and using super bright mode on the screen. I'll hit up my unpleasant surprise in a few minutes. First, I want to list some of the smaller details that jumped out when I was using the G7, the little stuff. For one, that Google Assistant button on the side is actually pretty smart. You know how sometimes Assistant takes a beat to start listening once you invoke it? Well, the G7 gives you a little haptic buzz when Assistant launches, and a separate, sharper vibration once it opens up the mic. That's very helpful for knowing exactly when to speak. Another nice thing about the button, you can double-click it to jump right into Google Lens, which came in handy on a lens scavenger hunt Google put together at the zoo during Google I.O. The point is, I'm glad the button is here. Samsung Bixby, this is not. A few more details. The G7's haptics are great for an Android phone, right up there with the V30 and Note 8. I also like that LG kept the chassis narrow for the G7, which makes one-handed typing easier compared to wider phones like the OnePlus 6. For a device that uses a rear-facing fingerprint sensor and features wireless charging, double tap to wake and double tap to sleep are crucial, and I'm glad LG kept them around. For those who like a little LED with their notifications, this one is fun because in addition to blinking for alerts, it also flashes on system events like airplane mode turning on or when you pair the phone to a Bluetooth headset. I love little touches like that. What I don't love is a sort of slow fingerprint sensor compared to other devices on the market and occasional lag when tapping into the multitasking ribbon. Obligatory warning about this being a pre-production device running pre-release software. Yeah, keep that in mind. Real quick, let's take one more trip up to Notchville for the unwelcome surprise I teased before. Take a look at the earpiece. You notice how LG bumped it over by a couple millimeters to make room for the selfie camera? Well, it turns out that decades of phone talking have trained we humans to center a phone on the ear pretty perfectly, and changing that by even a hair takes some getting used to on a call. Once you get it, phone calls are fine, and I love the addition of an extra volume option in speakerphone mode. In the same vein, extra time with the boombox feature has totally sold me on its utility. I mean, you're never going to mistake it for a Bluetooth speaker or a proper stereo, but find a good hard surface, or better yet, something hollow like a filing cabinet, and Boombox does live up to its name. When it comes to the camera, I'm in about the same place as before. On the upside, you know I'm always going to be a super fan for that wide-angle lens, which really does open up so many possibilities. Also, the main camera is pretty reliable, even in those spray-and-pray burst shots. And while super bright mode might make you look like you're an early 90s glamour model, at least it makes a photo possible in the dark. Also, I want to say once more that I'm glad this phone finally has a proper selfie shooter. But look, most of that is LG playing catch-up rather than bringing something new to the table. That even applies to the so-called AI mode, which is just automatic scene detection and usually adds so much saturation that even my tacky taste is put off. Annoyingly, LG has even removed at least one feature that made its camera stand out, pop-out picture mode. In its place, we get portrait mode, which, I mean, okay, it's popular, I get it, 
but I tend to like LG the most when it bucks trends, rather than belatedly deciding to follow them. With other companies delivering some truly jaw-dropping cameras these days, I'm sad to say it, but the wide angle is no longer enough. You'll notice, folks, that nowhere in the video have I yet mentioned the G7's ridiculous surname. Well, if you'd like to thank you me for that, stick with me through the sponsor spot here, our last stop before the conclusion. This video is brought to you by TunnelBear. True story, it's the first VPN I ever used, and I'm genuinely glad to sponsor it. TunnelBear lets you browse the web safely on a public hotspot, which I'm on frequently, and it lets you do it with the flick of a switch. TunnelBear even opened itself up to an independent audit to prove it's keeping its security promises. Mainly, though, gotta be real, I'm here for the mascot. Help support Mr. Mobile, and more importantly, keep your browsing secure. Hit the special link in the description for a discounted rate at tunnelbear.com slash Mr. Mobile. And since I dropped that sponsor URL, it means we're coming to a conclusion, folks. And it's a fairly simple one. If LG tries to price the G7 in line with other flagships at the $700 to $800 price tier, it doesn't have much to stand on. I mean, the industrial design is nothing special, the camera doesn't stand out the way it used to, and the AI spin LG is trying to sell is, frankly, weak. Also, if the past is any indication, we're not likely to see the company put a lot of muscle into marketing this thing to Americans, which means only enthusiasts are going to be aware of it. But if the G7 hits the US market at $650, like the G6 did, well, it's absolutely worth the attention of those enthusiasts, with a wide-angle camera and the boombox feature that no one else is doing. I still yearn for the LG of days past, unafraid to go boldly in strange new directions. But maybe fitting in is just the cost of doing business in the smartphone space these days. What do you think of the G7? Let me know if it's got a chance of pulling LG Mobile out of the red in the poll attached to this YouTube video. Be sure to visit that Tunnel Bear link in the description for your discount. And please subscribe to The Mr. Mobile so you don't miss the next video. Until next time, thanks for watching and stay mobile, my friends.